Alfie absolutely dominates one area of property investing. He is the biggest player in the whole of Europe in this niche. He has 75 residential care homes. He's the biggest residential care home owner in Europe. Alfie Best! I've been asked really just to tell you a little bit about my life and my journey. And to me, my journey is nothing but normal. But it seems to have taken on a life of its own. I am a gypsy, and that word is frowned upon. But that's my niche. Because out of all of your negatives, my negatives, they become our strengths. And it's about taking the negatives and turning them to positives. So I'm a Romani gypsy. I was born on the side of a road. And I opened my very first business when I was 16. And I used to buy vans from one part of uh, London, send them to another part, or I'd buy them in Wales and send them to another part of an auction and I'd make a small profit. And I did that until I was 20, and I opened up uh, a van hire centre. And I was a millionaire. And I, I'd bought my house, which was uh, a mock Tudor, £350,000 property. I had a £250,000 mortgage. I had a, a business that was producing £100,000 a year. And I was absolutely flying. And the recession set in. And in, that recession was 1990. And I collapsed across the desk and had a murmur at 20 years old. And by the sheer good grace of God, I managed to hang on to what I had by making adjustments, severe adjustments. I moved out of my house rented the house out, I broke the hire van centre down into small units that I could rent out for £50, £75, and all this was for was to pay the mortgage, to stop the banks repossessing. Thankfully, I now look back and I realise it wasn't soul destroying, it was character building. It brought me to the place where I needed to be. I was never going to fail. Failure is just a point in time, which is never a failure, as long as you take the experience from it. Today, I am one of the, in the top 450 richest people in the country. Now, I love property. To me, it's like looking at a beautiful woman. I look at a building, old, new, or indifferent, and I could touch it, feel it, I love it. What I did was I then went about buying all of the shops that we rented in a secondary company and rented the shops back to my company. I then, in turn, sold that company out who then in turn sold out to Vodafone, and now my company was renting shops to a blue chip company. So their value skyrocketed. It wasn't luck, it was just forward thinking of what I wanted to do. You take a hit on some things to get forward on others. <clears throat> and then I went into commercial property because I love property, I love it. And commercial property, was in a different type of sector then where pension funds didn't in, invest in them. They were more into uh, residential property at the time. And then, through judgment of following auctions, looking at different styles of property, I then built up a fairly substantial portfolio. And we sold those out to the pension funds. And we started again and kept that going. To that point in my life, was it easy? 
No, it was a magnificent journey that had a lot of obstacles, problems, issues from banks, issues from funding. But I wouldn't change a single thing of it. Because all of those difficulties where somebody said no, gave me the courage to knock on the next door. And the next door. And the next door. Until somebody said yes. Or better still, somebody believed in what I was presenting. My business plan. Because all properties are different. They're like people. Every piece of property is different and it has its niche. Then I come on to Wildcrest Parks, which is Europe's largest residential mobile home park company. We have 75 parks throughout the UK. We have five parks in America. We have holdings in golf courses and we have just completed on a £57 million deal, which is not included within that, which will take us to be the world's largest mobile home park operator. Am I privileged? I'm physically shaking now because I'm still a kid in the sweet shop and I'm privileged enough to be able to take those sweets out the glass jar. Where I wasn't, I wasn't before. We currently have 13,000 residents and that will go to 18,000 residents. Because what I'm trying to get across is, I'm nobody. I'm genuinely a nobody. Uneducated, not sharp, but there is one thing that I have and that is determination. Anybody can do it, anybody. My mum could do it. All it takes is a bit of self-belief, a decent business plan of what you want to do. Don't sway from the business plan unless you change your business plan. Don't go off track. Keep your plan functioning. Keep it motivatedly going forward. If you'd like to cash in on the next crash, buy property, no money down, get into buy to let, build up a portfolio and build up recurring income, in the comments below, there's a link to a report that we have written to help you get on the property ladder and create recurring income. Go get it. The next point that I, wa I wanna come to is wealth generation. It's amazing of how many people have made their wealth through property in the rich list. Documentation beats conversation. You can talk all you like, but facts are facts. So to start with, you're in the right industry. And this industry is not property. That's the title. There are so many different caveats of property you can do care homes, mobile home parks, residential mobile home parks, holiday parks. It's just in my sector. Before we start talking about multiple occupancies, flats, houses, this is the time now. This is the time now. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, now. To make your goals succeed. You have to find your niche and the moral of that is find what you love within the property sector. You know people use the word property and they throw it out there as if it's every piece of property. It's not. There's so many different types and there are things that you're going to pick up whether it be retirement homes, whether it be converting flats, whether it be duplexes, all of those you're going to have a passion for and one of them you're going to pick out and you're going to be an expert on because you love it. Somebody said to me, how would you describe yourself? And I said, I'm like a Premier League football player. I'm getting up in the morning and I'm going to put the ball in the back of the neck, the back of the net. 
I may miss, but the more I practice, the luckier I become. And I love what I do. So in a business, you're there to do a service. You're there to keep your customers happy, but you're not there at the detrimental of the business to send it bust. So you think about a tenant. Let's just take tenants, for instance. Of course it is important to keep your properties in a good state of repair and correct and proper. What is a good state of repair? Well, I can tell you what it is. It's, is it suitable for you? Would you live there? And if it, that's correct, that's a great starting point. Because every time I go to one of my parks, they always try to put me in the best one. And I go, no, 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 put me in the worst one. Because if, if the worst one is any worse than the best one, we've got a problem. Because we should have a standard. And I'm the best person in the way to say if that standard is there. I've done business with, with people that I've overpaid for parks for. And do you know they've been the best parks I've bought? Because they've given me a better service, better information. I've bought parks off of other people and they've been extremely good value. They've been the worst parks I've bought. You just have to get that. It, it, there's a little bit of magic in that, to be fair, um, in dealing with good people, though. The best thing that I can always say is you build up your circle of agents, valuers, and people that you get to know. And don't ring them just when you need them because you're just another customer then. You're just another telephone. You make those people your friends. You make those people your friends. So they're pleased to take your call when you ring them up. It's about building relationships. And by building those relationships, you will absolutely move forward in leaps and bounds because you're the first person on their mind. When you need help, they're going to put you to the front of the queue. But if you're just a telephone number, you're just another customer. Who would you help? The guy that you know? The guy you have a relationship with? Let's be honest about it. We all would like to say we treat all of our customers the same. But if there is a connection and a relationship there, you're going to treat them better. It's as simple as that. And that's the other way as well. One of the greatest blessings anybody can ever be given that they're contented. I'm not. And that's what drives me. Because I actually live with a fear of going bust. I've been there, very close to it. And there's not a day goes by that I don't concern myself that I could go bust. It could go wrong. Things can happen. And that is my driving force. That's my driving force to constantly check everything I'm doing. When you're operating your business within property, make sure that you run it on a cash flow. So important that you have a rudimentary, Excel spreadsheet on your running cost of your cash flow. Make sure that you always follow it. And there's going to be things on here, some people you're going to connect with and other people you're not. It's the ones that you connect with. It's the ones that you, that one piece of information that you can take to your business or your property that's going to make a difference. But whatever you do, give it 200%. Understand the market. See what's coming. See what's coming. And if we do have a recession, don't let it worry you. Because property's going nowhere. Unless you live in Dubai, they're not building any more of it. They're not building any more land. So drive forward, love what you do, 
make sure the property that you're dealing with, that you love, suits your character. And I swear to you, you will achieve your goals. If an idiot like me can do it, anybody can do it. My name's Alfie Best, and I want to thank you so much. <laughs>